Hello, everybody, and welcome to um, Birmingham City Council Digital Recruitment Webinar. Thanks ever so much for taking the time out to, to learn a little bit more about uh, us and our team. Thank you. And uh, we've got uh, a lineup uh, of assorted uh, friendly faces to talk to you this evening about what it's like working uh, for Birmingham's digital team. Um, and we'll introduce ourselves as we go along, but there's some, some mugshots to get you started. Uh, next slide. Let's start with a bit about Birmingham City Council, this wonderful organisation that you're interested in coming to work for. Um, slide. Uh, it's it's a very large organisation looking after nearly 1.2 million citizens and um, I like to think around you, you'll be looking after citizens in different roles from cradle to grave almost. So it could be registering a birth through to uh, education um, and schools and um, social care for children and in adults into social care, maybe roads, transport, uh, parks, libraries, all those different services that affect the local community. Uh, Birmingham City Council looks after uh, right through to cemeteries um, and crematoria. So uh, the whole uh, the whole raft of services. Uh, we also have um, almost well six almost sixty two thousand council homes as well. So we've got a very important role to play in the local community and the work that you do in Birmingham City Council is very, very visible and has high impact to all the residents within the city. So a little bit about our digital service and strategy. OK, our service, we've got over 11,000 users within the City Council, that's employees. Um, they're using our IT services and one of our roles is to, to make their lives easier. Um, we've got over 1,000 different local government service lines that we need to look after uh, and we do that through 300-ish contracts with third parties and suppliers and we've got over 600 sites connected to us. As I said, we've got about 1.2 million residents. Um, our website has about 900,000 vis visits a month about 2 million phone calls a year um, and 300,000 online transactions per month, but we would hope that gets bigger and bigger uh, and overtakes the phone calls uh, eventually. Uh, some nice stats on the right hand side around the devices and data that we, we are looking after as part of that challenge. Awesome. Um, in terms of our strategy, rather than just talk it through what a what we've done is provided a little video, so we're going to play that video for you now and I'll stop talking for a minute.
Thanks, Sarita. <clears throat> So that was a, a really short snapshot of our strategy and we worked really hard on that strategy, doing lots and lots of user research with stakeholders, uh, with uh, real users to get a real understanding of, of what was required in terms of the future service. Um, and, you, you know, it's, it's it, here's the things again, we're going to go into a little bit more detail in terms of the types of projects to give you a little bit of a flavour of the sort of work uh, that we're doing within the digital strategy. It's available online on our website. Do feel free to, to um, give that a Google and have a good look at, at what we're doing in terms of the delivery plan. So I talked about organising ourselves to deliver the strategy, so I just wanted to um, go through some of the, the the structure of the team and we are at the start of our journey in terms of this digital strategy and uh, we we believe that there's three planets that need to come into perfect alignment in order for us to deliver amazing digital experiences for our for our citizens and our users that starts with uh, products and delivering the right things so here we've got a focus a focus on technology enabled service design so doing uh, strong research with our users, basing our thoughts and experiences on real data and evidence. That then needs to be delivered somehow. So this is all about methodology and doing things in the right way. So coordinating that delivery, but being more agile, delivering things iteratively, moving away from um, waterfall practices and three year technology projects that don't, uh, don't add value quickly and don't allow that learning. Uh, and finally with platform and that's moving towards the right technology. So moving away from uh, legacy uh, monolithic, monolithic business systems to uh, interoperable components and cloud technologies that enable us to deliver faster. Um, all of those planets need atmospheres in which to thrive and breathe. So there are two other heads of function within our, our new structure around governance and customer experience. So that's uh, providing us with assurance and, and helping um, grease the wheels for our teams to work effectively and empower our teams. And then finally, um, capabilities and culture and a function that will work hard to support employees um, within the technology and digital uh, service uh, to be the best uh, they can be and also develop their careers with a strong career path and career tra trajectory from associate roles right through to lead and head, head of practice roles through to head of function. So a strong career path and, and as I mentioned lots and lots of services to work on and, and work with. And, and I mentioned a from and to, and we are at the beginning of the journey. So um, I just wanted to, to put this up there to say it's not it's not where we want it to be now. These roles are some of the first roles we're recruiting to, um, and we'll have a real opportunity to shape and develop the working practices that are talked about in the delivery space, um, really defining some of the product. Uh, function um, techniques and, and methodologies that will be used by others coming in behind. So this is a real opportunity to, to shape our, our uh, new digital service. Um, we want to move away from, from those silos, working in silos to collaborating on outcomes and working in the open, um, personal brand. It's all really important to us that that those things are part of our new culture, ways of working, uh, and it's all so that we can deliver that new strategy, um, which is which is essential for the council um, to deliver its challenges. <clears throat> OK, next one bit about our team and what it's like to work here. And part of that is is having an ethos. So we've got this one team, one purpose. Um, moving away from silos and, and shuffling things down a technology production line. Uh, we all need to be interested in the outcome, we need to be invested in the outcome and we need to work together uh, on the outcome, sharing wins and losses, uh, having a team camaraderie. Uh, we are a big team, the technology and digital service is around 300 and uh, 50 people, so we are a big team within a big organisation. Uh, so it's important that we're all on the same page and that we, we collaborate effectively with our, our team values and purpose. Next one. 
and with our with our sort of team uh, ambition we've got some principles um, and when we talk about digital it's a, it's a way of thinking and doing differently so we've got some um, principles here around what we want to do differently and how we want to think differently these are all very exciting um, I think values that we would then we, we work with people to improve their behaviours, thoughts and, and attitudes that we call all work together on the same page. And I'm going to hand you over to James Gregory now as our, our head of delivery. Hi, thanks, Cheryl. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm James Gregory. I'm head of delivery in, in Birmingham. i um, been here since uh, 2018. And um, so, yeah, I wanted to share with you um, a bit of, bit of context really around uh, around our delivery function. And then, I mean, as Cheryl, as Cheryl said, we're you know we're kind of at the start of a journey here, but there is already some things that we that we're really proud of, um, and, and I wanted to share some of that with you as well. So, um, the context here really is that we um, we we have two important roles to play within the council. So, first one is that we respond to to demand from outside of IT in, in digital service, so and from within as well, but to to support uh, the delivery of some really important things. And there's some things around the, the red ellipses there, which are some of the really big things that are going on in the council at the moment, um, or that are coming up. So we've got the customer program um, on there. Uh, we've, got, um, we've got the early insight and prevention program, which I'll come and talk, talk about in a little while. Um, new ways of working, which is all about um, sort of kicking us on from, um, from what we learnt and, and so on in COVID what we're able to do and, and, and making that turning that into what does that mean for our new organisation and um, it's a housing transformation programme, education skills, um, direct uh, transformation programs, a, a whole raft of huge things that we'll be at the heart of um, within IT and, and digital and the idea is that we want to get in very early at the beginning of these uh, programmes and help them to shape them and ask the right kind of questions and make sure that they're being based around um, you, you know user, user centred design principles basically um, so that's that's one of our roles is to respond to to demand in that way. And the other thing is that Shell's talked about the uh, the digital strategy, and um, you know that's something that we've developed. It's the digital strategy for Birmingham, but it's something that developed by by us as a team. Um, and and we therefore have a a really um, important and powerful role to play actually in terms of influencing how that uh, that digital strategy um, gets delivered in practice out in the out in in the wider council. Um, so that what we've started in 19 Digital here needs to permeate through the whole of the organisation in terms of the, the ways of thinking, di digital mindset and that kind of thing. So those are our those are our two really important roles that we play. Next slide, thanks, Rita. So I wanted to talk to you about one of the things that we're really proud of, um, and and um, everybody around the table um, and as in online there has has all been involved in this uh, delivery of the field worker platform. Um, uh, kind of just to just to kind of cut to the chase, this is a, a this is a, a platform that we developed from from scratch um, for that will serve up to five thousand field workers. So that's people who don't work in offices in, in Birmingham, but are delivering services out there with the customer, whether it be in their homes or on the streets or um, uh, wherever else uh, in businesses and so on. Um, and uh, this is this is a, effectively a, um, a not, a, not quite standardised, but a a platform which um, it's a single platform that uh, any user can any user out there in the field worker space can log into um, and access their line of business systems from, and they'll be able to do things the sort of things that you see on the right hand side there. They'll have they'll have the forms which actually a lot of them at the moment are on just bits of paper and they and they deal with scraps of paper and pen outs in the field, or they work with. Um, failing systems, their back office systems, which don't necessarily talk to them very well when they're in the field. Um, they can do real time updates on their devices. They can take photos and send them. I mean, some of these things might sound, you know, when you when you think about, you know, digital digital services uh, of the day, you know, fairly, fairly standard, but actually in Birmingham terms, this is a huge step forward um, and uh, and we'll, we'll really transform the way that our field workers work. But the thing that we're so, so we, we're only days from um, from going live with our first cohort of um, of field workers on this, and um, uh, which is fantastic. It's been a hell of a journey. But the thing we're really proud of, actually, that this is the this is such a, such a big thing, and it's the first it's the first time that Birmingham's ever um, sort of made that foray into developing something 
which is fit for Birmingham rather than uh, just going out to the market and finding something which kind of fits there or thereabouts um, and where we probably pay a load more money and, and waste a load of the functionality or don't get the functionality we quite need. So, you know, going back back to the beginning, we spent we spent eight to 12 weeks um, doing user research. Um, so Joel talked about that as being one of the key things that we that we want to, that, that we that we're going to be good at and we're getting good at. And um, that's one of the key roles that we're recruiting for is a lead user researcher. So that is going to be one of our key functions going forward. And it's you know, we, we did a, we did a great job actually. And, and, and it's proved so useful. And we've carried on that user research, not from not just in the discovery phase, but we've carried that on through the whole of the delivery. Um, and that's been so important because when when people come and challenge us around why we put a particular feature in on or, or left a particular feature out for that matter, um, we're able to put the user research in front of them and say, look, we ask your users, these are the pain points they have. It's not one of those, so therefore we're not delivered it in the first iteration. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're building we're building this. We've got a minimum viable product going live in, in, in days um, uh, or so time, um, and then we're going to iterate it. So we're, we're bringing new, we'll bring, bring additional services on board um, where we can help them configure their the forms and so on. And ultimately, we will have up to 5,000 people working on this platform. So that's the kind of thing that you that um, that you'd be getting involved in if you're if you're a user researcher or in the product space um, in Birmingham. Um, actually, just before going to early insight mentions, just just quickly, um, there was some there was some other really good things that we did in COVID. Now um, we were really at the start of the journey uh, with with digital at the start of COVID, and COVID almost like gave us a bit of a kickstart um, into it. And uh, so you know things like for example we've got a lot as you probably you're probably aware lots of vulnerable people who were shielding during covid in the city and um we very quickly had to um spin up and build basically a, a, a an application which allowed us to identify those people um to communicate with the contact center who were identifying additional people uh, and then to be able to put packages of support together um and get that out to the distribution centers that were feeding people and, and getting medication out to people so uh, and that was something that we uh, that we pulled together um, within within the space of you know a, again a few days at the start of COVID, um, and we could only do that because we we worked in a really multidisciplinary way. Um, we we got teams. We basically dropped everything else, got teams together, and got 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 told the best thinking on the job and, and got the thing done. Um, and the other thing is uh, there was a there was a uh, there was a, a need identified where we might need to have to put um, take people out of their day jobs to put them onto the front line. Um, in case of huge staff shortages during COVID. Uh, and again, within the space of two weeks, we developed an app, um, and Azim was very um, central to this, we developed an app um, where we were able to collect information about people's skills and experience, and then that was, that was the sort of supply side of the app. And then we developed another app, which was another part of the app, which was about the demand. So service heads of service were able to say, I need uh, these kind of skills for this amount of time to work on this stuff on the front line. Um, and then the third element was a matching algorithm, which then was an, enabled us to say, well, we could take this people over here, which, which match that need. Uh, and that was all we developed. Again, we developed that iteratively and rolled that out in space in um, two weeks initially and then and then a further iteration in three weeks. So, you know, it's those sort of things that are really rewarding actually to get involved in um, rather than the you know, the old ways of working that we might have done in the past. Um, and just to give you a really quick, um, I've gone on a bit, but I'll go yeah, next one, sorry to please. I'll, I'll just give you a, a quick view of this one because this is this is so interesting. It's, um, I mean, this goes right to the heart of what the council um, needs to achieve and is committed to achieve over the next few years. Um, it is a direct link to the council plan and it's about um, supporting um, early intervention and prevention. So. The idea being, I mean, Cheryl talked about cradle to grave services, and this is about stopping certain people getting into the need for some of those services early on. Um, and it's something that the council has grappled with for, for many years, um, but there's now a proper programme being put around it. And and again, we will be we'll be right at the heart of that. So we'll be we'll be bringing our kind of digital mindset and digital uh, techniques and so on to bear um, on this early intervention and prevention. Program and the, the next next slide just shows um, some of the so, some of the sort of the ways that we've uh, the, the team have approached this so far in terms of identifying what what citizens need um, and then there'll be the, the, the next stage in discovery we'll be going back out and just testing and validating those things 
um, um, and before we get then into some of the wider service design um, uh, work. So just I hope that gives a flavour of sort of the some of the really interesting stuff that we've a delivered and are proud of, and b um, you know b how we work uh, in collaboratively and, and multidisciplinary way, and see some of the stuff that's coming up. So that's um, that's that's some examples of what we do. I wanted to introduce you to some of the team now because um, I know we, we're going out for a number of roles in this um, uh, in this recruitment campaign, um, uh, and I wanted to introduce you to some of those some of the, some of the people in the in those particular roles. So um, Helen uh, is one of our delivery managers, and she's working on the field work field worker project. And Helen's going to talk a bit about the day in the life of, of her role, and then Sarita is going to come in, and then we're going to hand over to Asim to finish off this section. Thank you, James. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm Helen and I'm um, the delivery manager on the Fieldworker project. It's the first ever um, product, digital product that Birmingham City Council is creating and developing um, using user needs and pain points taken from our own field workers. So we really are building and developing a product that's going to be wholly owned and controlled by Birmingham City Council, which is incredibly empowering. Um, what, what does it mean for me? Well, we have to work at pace. Um, we need to stay on track. As James has said, we are literally only days away from um, seeing this launch for the first time um, which is incredibly exciting. So on a day to day basis, no day is ever the same. Uh, it's there. I'm there as a servant leader to, to support the team. I'm there to ensure that I have a strong, happy and willing team who want to continue developing regardless of the trickiest technical conundrums that we um, regularly um, uh, have on our to do lists um, as we track on our JIRA boards. Um, it is about keeping the team happy, removing blockers, keeping pace and ensuring that we always know what we're going to be working on next. So I need to be uh, on the ball, planning and working with the product owner. No day um, is ever the same and it's in incredibly exciting and I feel very proud to be the delivery manager on Fieldworker Project. Sarita, over to you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sarita Solanke, project manager with IT and digital services. Um, so my background is uh, transformation and, and strategy and quite a varied um, skill set. Um, so I was asked to come and do some user research on the uh, customer service program. Um, so that really sort of enabled me to use, you know, some of my, my skills in terms of the fact that I like to delve into things, a um, bit of a people person um, and have, have done some um, user research in the past. Um, day to day, it's been really interesting to sort of learn new techniques and, and tactics and use different applications in terms of how um, we do the user research and undertake the user research. Traditionally, we probably you know, wouldn't have put together a, a user research plan in terms of you know, the steps that we're going to take, um, the mapping exercise for the citizens um, and internal stakeholders as well, um, but actually um, doing step by step sort of uh, research plans and um, just understanding the end to end um, of the user has really sort of um, helped sort of outline sort of next steps in terms of, um, you know, what we plan to do within the programme. Um, I think having the opportunity has been really, really interesting for me um, and actually seeing things from, you know, sort of start to finish end to end um, has been a really interesting um, process. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been great. So I will hand back over now to James. Um, Sorry, well, I'm handing over to Adam. So I, I, think, I, think I think before I do, just to say that um, um, without without wanting to embarrass Helen and um, Sarita, you know, a couple of years ago when we when we you know first started talking about digital and agile and so on, um, you know, none of us had really had that that much um, involvement in it. But you know, these guys kind of stuck their head up, said this sounds really interesting, and have just thrown themselves into it. And um, you know, we've had we've had support along the way, coaching, mentoring. But now, you know, two two years on, and Helen's running the uh, the field worker program. Is this platform for five thousand workers um, on her own, um, and Sarita's running you know user research projects. Uh, so the you know the the, the the pace that we've been on, the journey we've been on in the last couple of years has been phenomenal. And um, the, the reason for saying that is Azim has been key to that as well. But brought Azim in 
um, a while ago to, to help us on the journey because Azim's an agile, an experienced agile coach um, and we'll hear from Azim now, his, his take on where we're at. Hi, hi everyone. Yeah, um, I, I, th I think you, you'll, you'll find the, the kind of barriers uh, as an organisation that we've come across are quite typical. Uh, um, uh, and, 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 and the way that we've overcome them uh, actually is what I've been uh, pleasantly surprised by. So we've had the, the, the typical issue around lack of wider buy-in uh, um, uh, around Agile. If you don't get that, you, you, you're going to struggle to bring about a cultural change in Agile. We've had Cheryl with um, our director, Peter, uh, um, speaking to um, our executive team, uh, um, really wanting them to understand that uh, what it actually means to, to, to uh, what does digital mean? What does the term agile mean? And, 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 and really getting them to understand that. But also additionally, you know, probably one of the biggest successes in, in, in that buy-in was within um, the field worker program where we, we requested um, is a cross is a project that cr cuts across a lot of the service areas, and we got 45 uh, um, active members that were supporting our uh, single uh, product owner in in building uh, um, a, a building that product and going on on that journey. So that was really good. Um, th th there was also in the early days a lack of open communication, and what I mean by that is everyone. People were doing their projects, but they they were too uh, um, or they were uneasy in showing what they were doing up until it was perfect. So they wanted to perfect what they're doing, and I, I think uh, Birmingham has really taken strides in in building a culture where there's no blame. You know, it doesn't matter if you do a show and tell, and it doesn't go completely right. You know, that's how we learn, and 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 that culture has really started to bed in. Um, and, and I think that now working in the open, uh, um, making your mistakes in the open, no blame culture, learning from 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 that rather than actually blaming what you know uh, individuals is, is probably a key fundamental reason in terms of how and why we're moving ahead uh, at at probably the speed that we're moving ahead at, at as well. And 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 then probably one of the last two what I wanted to mention was being risk averse. <laughs> the field worker uh, 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 project and a program is an example of that. This organization had never taken on a, such a large development like that. And to take on a challenge like that with the team that they had, which a combination of individuals who hadn't done agile before, they didn't have the fear of doing that. And that was about being uh, dare I say or not, being proud and being Birmingham to actually really move forward and do that. And I think that that is really instrumental in in, in, in having that confidence to move forward and, and attempt to do things that you haven't done before. And, and then the last one was, was about um, in, individuals wanting to preserve the leg, legacy mechanisms of control uh, when they're delivering projects. I know Helen I had to she found it really hard at the beginning to to move away from that control and say actually the team needs to be empowered um, and and the team is empowered uh, to deliver this and having the confidence in the team now she doesn't do that and and she has the confidence to to manage the team by exception uh, um, and have has the confidence in in in, in having a self management managing team around her. And I think that's, that shows you actually how the culture is changing um, uh, with, 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 with the fact that the, the strategy is now in place and moving us forward around that. So that's, that's a bit of my experience in terms of where we are. I'll hand it back over to you, James. Thank you, Rosie. I'll be back next time. Yeah. OK, so um, um, I think it might be might be useful for us just to spend um, a couple of minutes. So we'll, I'll, I'll talk about how to apply um, in a minute for people who are interested. Um, but let's just let's just have a quick recap on what the roles are. So, um, you want to do that, Cheryl? Yeah, yeah, can do. So um, we've got we've got three roles currently available. But these are the first of many uh, roles. As as I mentioned, we're we're doing a a service redesign at the moment. So the, there will be as as we move through that um, and throughout the summer into the autumn, other opportunities that will come up. Uh, but what we've got available at the moment is a lead user researcher. 
um, and a, a lead user experience designer and a lead product manager. And we are looking for bold, open and curious people like these two wonderful people uh, to help us and lead, and lead uh, those disciplines. Um, it's likely that those those roles are going to be working on the field worker product, uh, but there's a potential that they, they may be picking up other other pieces of work as well. So um, there they are. There's, there's how to apply. Uh, and we've got applications open until midnight on the 19th of June. Um, <clears throat> it's probably worth just saying uh, where these things are based. So uh, Azim at the moment, he's out in Malaysia. Uh, so uh, we are big champions of hybrid and remote working. We work mostly remote at the moment. Um, and when we come together in the office, it's for a reason. So it might maybe to facilitate the session that's going to be better in person. Um, and when it's going to aid team collaboration, we make full use of agile tools, uh, teams, uh, chats, meetings, so that we can work, get the work done. Uh, and we focus on what gets done as opposed to where it gets done. Uh, that's a real uh, part of our, our culture. So don't worry about having to commute into Birmingham every day, but uh, do be aware that sometimes a face-to-face -face will be will be needed. Um, but, but yeah, I think in, in a nutshell, that's probably enough for now. But has anybody got any questions? Um, we're open for questions. Uh, thank you, Joe. There have been a couple of questions come in, but you have answered them already. So there was a couple of questions around um, the blend uh, of working locations, which I think you addressed, uh, and uh, and which roles there are currently available as well. Um, and uh, one person there anonymously um, asking if uh, it would be possible to get a copy of the PowerPoint. Over to you. Absolutely, yes. We are going to um, publish the, the whole webinar, but yeah, we make the slides available as a slide, a slide deck as well. Uh, no problem at all. Any other questions? Well, uh, no, that there's, a, there's a link there to the to our blog as well, and that, that, that's one thing we're, we're kind of making a conscious effort to, as, as Azim said, work more in the open and talk a lot about what we're doing. Um, so, uh, you know, we've we've kind of scratched the surface today in terms of some of the things that we that we've done that we're proud of. But there's a whole heap of other stuff going on. Um, that if you if you go if you go to the Birmingham.localgov.blog site, there's a whole load of stuff on there, and you'll also find the links to the job descriptions um, in there, um, and you can apply from there as well. I think. Oh, that's super. Thank you, James. And. Um, if you're watching this on catch up, if you're watching it uh, later than uh, the broadcast, don't forget this final slide has, as uh, James said, those uh, final contact details. Uh, back over to you, uh, Cheryl, thank you. OK, well, um, if there aren't any further questions, I think that's where we'll close it. And I'll say thank you for your time in uh, attending and listening. And I look forward to, to seeing some applications. And, and if you have got any questions that you didn't think of today that do crop up, then the contact details are on here. And we'll be publishing this through our Twitter page if, if you haven't made uh, had a chance to make a note. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Gone. Oh, we have had one question just come in in the nick of time, I think. Uh, I'm not sure my sound is coming through, but does service design redesign include business process as well as its digital twin? Um, so a question there around uh, the business yes. process of service design. Process and, uh, and a service blueprint to understand how the service will work end to end. So yes, the, is the answer to that one. Brilliant, thank you. And I think we will call proceedings to an end there. Thanks everybody for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.